Hey everyone, Vladimir is here with our multi-platform game development tutorial. So in the previous lesson we have uh, implemented the basic hero selection screen, but we cannot actually select anything. So I think today would be appropriate to, you know, implement something that can be selected and uh, so you can switch your character and also lay the foundation of the character descriptors or some records. Uh, what do we need? We need a simple data structure to describe each character's stats and um, I think we're going to introduce multiple characters and uh, make them upgrade uh, for the game currency, well later. And the trick is that each of the characters has its own growth stats, strong points. Uh, for example, one character will be getting plus one health after every upgrade and the other will be getting like one health after every four or two upgrades and um, the same goes for attack strength or HP regeneration from picking the bonus and uh, I think that way we can create multiple characters for example a character that has lots of HP but has low attack or the character that doesn't have that much attack but can pick up bonuses frequently and so on and so on so uh, I think we'll need a new class and uh, let me just skip to my tutorial desktop I think in our logic objects uh, package create a new Java class and let's call it character record the record will just uh, store the stats of the characters it's not going to store the current data but more of a like baseline stats that are going to be used later so uh, what are we going to do i think we first we need to determine what kind of stats are we going to have and i think it makes sense at this point to at least 0.4 stats uh it's going to be levels uh they all will be saying how many levels do you need for the next upgrade level for example uh, if I make the stat and name it levels 4 HP upgrade and for example assign it 4 that means every 4 levels the player will be getting every 4 upgrade levels the player will be getting HP upgrade etc etc so let me get 3 more stats which I've been mentioning uh, one is levels for HP re regen upgrade this will be responsible how many HP does one heart regenerate uh, one will be levels for attack upgrade which will symbol signify how many uh, how many levels are needed before the attack increases from the bonus pickup and uh, the final one would be levels for bonus spawn upgrade I think it's a good idea we'll just make the frequency of the bonus spawns uh, dependent on this so right so let's just and of course every character will need its name uh, well at least for the reason to display it on the character screen a bit later uh, so let's get let's make a string uh, note that I'm making them public final this is like a constant we're going to determine them uh, define them once and use them later so we're not worried about making them public and accessing them later because there's no way our program can change them easily so um, Let's start with the constructor. Let me just zoom it in so you can see it. Uh, it won't do anything special, just uh, assign the initial values. And uh, we just, yeah, let's just assign those values. Levels for HP upgrade is all HP. Uh, levels for. Regen upgrade is all down. Regen levels for. Basically, it's just a lot of uh, you know repetitive tasks, and uh, I think at this point when you start adding the content, it always gets somewhat repetitive. But you need to ace on and just uh, finish it. Simply because, well, why did we go <laughs> through all the path if we're not going to finish it? I think it makes sense in most of the games uh, you'll need to add the content which doesn't involve much of the programming but so if you're a programming tech like me it will be a bit harder for you just emotionally but 
in the end it's fine. Uh, let's just introduce the character names. I'm, I think I'll just make five characters like um, human, spider, uh, ghost, slime, and uh, skeleton. Yeah, I think this will make sense. So let's make let's make those names that we are going to use as lookup. Human. Actually, let me just duplicate it and um, rename it. You can duplicate the actual string that you have a cursor on by pressing Control D. That's one of the shortcuts. Uh, so it's spider. We call it spider. Uh, skeleton. Let's call it Mr. Skeletal. Um, ghost. Simple ghost. And a slime. Let's call it slime. Cool. So we have some base stat description, and now let's actually create an array full of those descriptions so that we can use later for lookup purposes. So let's make a static public array. Call it characters and predefine it in Java. The syntax means that you are predefining the array, and now you just need to create a new ch character records. So my idea is um, the following, I've predefined the stats and I'm just uh, going to input them. But yeah, the human is going to have a very good HP regeneration, but mediocre bonus spawn rates and uh, attack. Uh, the spider is going to have a better attack. Uh, no, actually those stats suck. Uh, I think the spider should have... Uh, better attack but uh, and better bonus spawn rate I think that makes sense uh, spider new character record uh, for the skeleton let's go for the high damage like it will be upgrading the attack on every upgrade but uh, low HP regen I think it makes sense and uh, not so good. Oh, well, actually, better than average. Uh, bonus drop rate. For our ghost, let's just go for average on all parameters. And a bit better on attack, probably. And for the slime, let's just go, you know, for the what kind of character is associated with the slime. I think it's good HP. A bad attack and uh, fast bonus spawns just because it just you know slides between the bonuses or something like that so um, let me do this um, basically it's just a simple class with a lot of static data uh, nothing too complicated but hmm, well you'd have to do something and now it's time to adjust our character screen and I think the idea behind it we're not going to implement the stats yet but we are going to just show the correct sprite which we have chosen. And to do this, I think we need to adjust our resources class. Uh, you see the same way that we have those enemy sprites. Let's just add a hash map, uh, which is string and sprite key pair by player sprites. Uh, note that I'm using the string as first thing in the pair of hash map lookup. But if you're just doing a lot of lookups, I would not suggest doing this because um, often depends on the implementation, but um, it can get very slow. So never do string lookup. But in this case, it's fine because I'm just doing it very sporadically. I'm not going to do it every frame. So right, mm, the idea is that I'm going to initialize those player sprites as a new hash map. Android Studio completes it for you, and now you just. Uh, you know, put the sprites according to the name. So, check, just use character record, uh, character names human, and just create the sprite with the right name. So, for the human, it's quite simple, it's something that we've already have. For mm, the spider, we just create the <laughs> enemy, the same sprite as we create for the enemy spider. And um, basically for everything other, you just use the same sprites that you would use for the enemies. 
I'm sorry, this is a tedious part, but I promise that we're doing all the parts. And I think it gives you the good impression what sometimes goes on um, behind the scenes when you develop the game. I mean, it's easy to... Well, it's not easy, but some part of the game development, of course, is the algorithm. But when you create the content, it is also important to focus on it. So, yeah, and the content can't get repeated, repetitive. And, um, alright, the ghost and the slime. Which we take from the slime? I think this should do it. And um, after that, let me just go to the game progress. And, you know, we had this in our character selection screen in the previous lesson. I've created the current character. I think the best idea is to put it into the game progress, actually. Just put it here, public static int current character, make it equal zero. We're not loading or saving it anywhere, we're just going to address it later. For now, just put it there, initialize it to zero, and let's dance from this one. And you know, first thing that I should think we should do, you know, is this image creation when you create the player sprite. Uh, well, remove the current character zero, equals zero, but in the player sprite, uh, what we are going to do, hero sprite, Instead of just picking the player's texture, texture, let's uh, make a lookup. Uh, we're just checking the player sprite, and we're getting the well, actually selected sprite. And how do we do this? We check our character records, the array of characters. We check our game progress, the current character selected, and we take the name, and we just look it up by the name. So we are looking up the sprite by the name of the currently actively selected character. That should do it. Uh, let me just run the game and show you and check actually if everything is working. Alright, something is not working obviously. Uh, okay, what can be the problem? Obviously it's not picking up something. Human. We're checking the human. Ah, right. Let me see what's going on. The current character is zero. We're trying to use it inside of the characters. Let me just print out the current name. We're looking up by human, oh, but it just returns zero. So let me see what's going on real fast. Uh, the obviously the issue is probably the player sprite. We're initializing the player sprite and we're putting something under the name of human. All right, human is the wrong sprite name. We just have it as a player. So yeah, just be careful with that. I run the game and after I run the game, uh, well, you see we have the same human, so nothing essentially changed yet. And uh, to change things, we need to adjust, you know, our beautiful arrows that we're drawing. And what we're going to do is actually, let's add some click listeners, like we had with hero sprites, but in this case we just work with the arrows. Next button. Um, so next button. Uh, before we set position, it doesn't matter, but for consistency, let me just do this. Uh, add listener, and you can just copy the listener from our start button. It's a start. <laughs> it's a start. Uh, delete everything in touch up, and let's just think what we want to do. When you press the next, obviously you want to increase the current selected character. You just add one or just use plus plus operator, but you can go out of bounds, right? So if the current character actually equals to the uh, character record and amount of characters, then, well, you need to reset it. Let's just set it to zero. So as soon as we try to get out of the bounds, we, are, we reset it. And one thing that we should do, we clear the stage and uh, we prepare the UI and you. We're doing this because you know, it might seem as an overkill, we're just deleting all the UI elements from the stage. 
uh, when we could just you know change the uh, hero image but this is necessary in this case because later on we're going to have some different UI elements for example like hero stats and you need to refresh them so instead of just refreshing the selected elements we just delete everything and start from a new page with a newly selected character. Let me just show you what's going on. We press the next character and you see it gets us the next sprite and then just it returns to the player. So what we need to do, what's left to do is we actually need to do something like that for our previous button. Uh, don't be afraid to copy those lines of code. Uh, add a new click listener. But in this case, we're just uh, scrolling in the other direction, so we're just subtracting one. And uh, if we go below zero, we should go to the to the right side of the of our character array. So we just take it the last index of the character array. We're just going in the circle, you know, and uh, we can clear the stage and prepare the UI in the same way. So let me just show you what's going on. You see we can just scroll in both directions and I think it's working pretty good but if we press start, all right bad example, but if we press start the character will not be selected, the right one. So what, the last thing that we need to do is we need to go to our player class and you see our when we set the sprite for the player we need to replace it by actually making a lookup for our resources, player sprites, and we look up our currently selected sprite by name. Uh, character record, characters, uh, game progress, current character. And when we do this, and if we run the game, and if you, for example, okay, wrong, you, you just, you also need to add the name of the character. So we look up by name, right? Uh, so yeah, when you do this and when you run the game and when you for example select the ghost and press start you see we have a ghost so um, Right, I think that concludes this lesson. Thank you for watching if you have any questions Don't be afraid to comment. I'm also adding the transcript and the github in and the github uh, Link to the github below. So thanks for watching Have fun and keep programming guys. Good luck See you next time. Vladimir is out.